Article 42. On petition of Stephen Joyce and at least 25 registered voters, we direct the Board of Selectmen to not approve any special event requests that result in the closure of any road in the town of Hampton. The only allowed exceptions are the annual seafood festival, neighborhood block parties, and parades. Majority vote required is our motion to open discussion on Article 42. Petition article, Mr. Rotter, moderator, unless Mr. Joyce is here. I saw Mr. Joyce oh. earlier. Mr. Yes. Joyce, you make a motion. Move to, is there a second? And I'll second. Second by Ms. Woolsey. Mr. Joyce, would you like to speak to Article 42? Um, I'll be here for, if anybody has any questions. All right. Chief Sawyer, would you like to be heard? Well, well, the, Mr. Joyce would like to speak to it first. Yeah. And we can talk to it after. It might be a more. Yeah, I think that would be appropriate. way to handle that. Yes. Steve Joyce, 12 Dover Ave. Um, I wrote this in reference to an um, incident that happened in October where basically uh, Ocean Boulevard and Ashworth Ave were closed down for upwards of six hours for a race. Um, many people I talked to from uptown were very upset that they weren't allowed to go about their normal Sunday duties, whether at church or work, uh, laundry, shopping, whatever. We were basically locked out. You couldn't go anywhere. Um, so I'm hoping to get the support of the town to get these events stopped where the roads are actually closed. Um, most people have no problem with the races we have where, uh, you know, the roads aren't closed. But when you close down the roads, people can't go about their normal duties. So that's pretty much the premise of this. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Joyce. Chief Sawyer. Uh, Chief Sawyer, if I, Blake Wayne, uh, I do stand uh, in opposition to this. Um, I will say that uh, the situation the gentleman described would not be affected by this ordinance as written. Ocean Boulevard in the town of Hampton is a state road controlled by New Hampshire DOT, and they issue those permits as to whether they can close a road. This article would have no effect on that incident as he described. What this article would do is prevent uh, the closure of town roads which currently lies under the authority of the Board of Selectmen or the Police or Fire Chief in the case of emergencies. But as far as the events go, uh, the timing of this is kind of unique, is that we are getting prepared for the 17th Annual Penguin Plunge uh, this coming Sunday. If this were to pass, there wouldn't be an 18th. And I really don't understand why we would want to do that. Uh, it's a great event, but we do have to close portions of Ocean Boulevard through a state permit but we also have to come before the board to get permission to detour traffic and reroute onto town roads. This article would prevent events such as the Penguin Plunge. Uh, our 9-11 ceremony would be prohibited because we closed down sections of Dearborn Avenue, and there is no allowance for that. What I would recommend is we leave it as is. The authority to close a road or accept these events coming into Hampton lies with the Board of Selectmen. If you're unhappy with the events that they're allowing, vote them out. But the authority has to lie with people that speak to the police department, they speak to the fire department, they talk to public works about how we can do these things safely. There is no getting around that we're going to have an impact on some people. We can't get around that. But we also have to look at what are the pluses for the community. We're talking about you know, extending our seasons, which is beneficial to the town revenues, the business revenues, the state revenues, and in my opinion, the pluses far outweigh the impacts that we're having. And we do try to make every consideration to accommodate those folks that are negatively impacted. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Sawyer. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Mr. Rice? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Fred Rice, 15 Heather Lane. I agree 100% with Chief Sawyer. Um, the role of government is not to pick winners and losers in anything. Uh, the role of government is to facilitate uh, the best uh, quality of life for everybody in the town. Uh, establishing a blanket prohibition of any type of activity in the town is pretty much not the way to go unless you're talking about something that's already illegal. Um, I think the solution to this is, is much, would be much better handled by leaving it in the, in the hands of the police, the selectmen, uh, and other appropriate agencies so that they can modify the route of a, an activity 
or limit the time or whatever. A very good friend of mine who lives on North Shore Road uh, complained to me about the, the one of the uh, races that they had there. He couldn't get in or out of his house for three or four hours one day. So I understand what the frustration is. But this, the, there's, it's not either that or close everything off and never allow any of these things to happen. The solution is to work together to find something that has some flexibility so that you can still hold the event but run it on roads or at times where it will have the minimal impact on the most people. So I would, uh, I would be in opposition to this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, warrant article. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Mr. Bridal and then uh, Ms. Stalmack. that has sponsored it, I'm sure his intention was well. Uh, it, it has many ramifications. I'm thinking just of our um, tree lighting when we have to close down Depot Square. I'm thinking of the 9-11 ceremony. There, and there are a number of things that are out there. And I just, I would hope that they'd, they'd leave this, uh, you'd oppose this article Leave it to the selectman, leave it to the fire chief, leave it to the police chief. If you have a problem, you have an issue, come talk to us. I'm sure we can work it out. Thank you. Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Delmack. Candace Delmack, 488 High Street. Um, I'm opposing this um, because I just love being trapped in my house for three hours while people are running by. It's a wonderful experience, and if you get out there and you participate in this stuff, you, you enjoy the community spirit. I think we could uh, manage it better so people can sneak out on half of the road or something like that. But the hotels are filled up by these people that participate. The restaurants have a, an extended year. The hotels have an extended year. You know, these poor people have three months to make a year's wages. I don't think excluding races, road races and things like that, is the spirit that we want. People come to this town and they say, God, we'd love to live here. You people are so lucky. And we are. So let's enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Salmack. Mr. Bridal. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Nick Bridal, 225 Toll Farm Road. I'd like to echo Ms. Stelmack's comments. Um, for a long time, the beach has been trying to extend its season. Uh, not only does it create revenue for private business, but I know the parking lots gain a lot of extra revenue from concerts and, and races and uh, the catamaran events down there. Um, in addition to the, the um, the tree lighting and some of the other parades and uh, the, the first thing that came to my mind when I heard of this Warren article was uh, Chief Maloney's funeral procession that came through the town. Uh, this whole neck of the state banded together in order to make that happen. I would hate for that to fall into one of the cracks for us to honor somebody who, who gave such a sacrifice to fall under such a blanket statement. Um, I think that the system we can do is uh, a little more notification. I, th I think the problem just needs to be finely tuned. I don't think it needs to be blanketly overwritten, and I would oppose this uh, Warren article. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Bridal. Ms. Martin. Diana Martin, Director of Parks and Recreation. Um, and I also rise in opposition to this article as it affects recreation in this town by excluding future road races and special events. The selectmen have a pulse in regard to these entities, and I would like to see it stay with them to make the decisions on the events as they come in. This would exclude longer road races and events that our Town Recreation and Parks Department put on, and one of the missions of Parks and Recreation is exercise and quality of life. Running has become a very popular form of exercise, which all ages can participate in, and races are a fun event that thousands of people participate in in this town. I can also say that at least one of those companies that provide the longer races donates money back to a number of organizations in this town. I'm also opposed to this, as stated earlier, because it also excludes special events. So, so, so far our department has been able to run events with minimal effect on the roads, but an example of a program that would most likely have to stop would be the town tree lighting ceremony because it grows every year. And I would hate to see that um, have to go away because of this article. So again, I'm opposed to this and I hope that everybody sees it that way. Thank you, Ms. Martin. Ms. Barnes. Regina Barnes, 95 Presidential Circle. I'm going to keep this real quick because the past five or six people have pretty much touched on everything that I want to touch on. I think anything that Hampton can do to make a longer season, make it better for businesses that struggle through the winter, 
is great and definitely proactive for the town and I think we should keep it the way it has always been everything that needs to get done wants to get done goes before the board of selectmen and I think we should trust the board and our chiefs of all the departments to uh, decide whether or not it's a good decision thank you thank you Ms. Barnes Mr. Woodall hey, uh, just quickly that uh, the system works as is. We had a group come in last year at one point to the Board of Selectmen asking to uh, run a race, and the chief came in and didn't agree with the plan they had, and we turned that group down. And they, they were pretty upset about it, but we turned them down. So I think the system works. Plus, I would like to say that the majority of the road races are contributing money to charities, which I think is a big deal for the, uh, for the town. I know that uh, local sports works very closely with the Rotary Club, and contributes an awful lot of money to charities. So I think we would be cutting out a lot of funding for charities if we were to restrict the uh, road races. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Riddell. Mr. Hammer? Tracy Hammer, 207 North Shore Road. Uh, I'm one of the ones of the October event that's highly affected. Uh, on a Sunday morning on North Shore Road, you have no exit until approximately 10, 10 a.m. The roads are closed. It doesn't say uh, reduced use. It doesn't say limited use. It says closed. And it is enforced by police officers. So you, I can't go north on 1A. I can't, go on, uh, I can't get off North Shore Road. I can't go south. And I, I have no motion at all. This may be saying there's a fly on the baby's head, get the sledgehammer. I agree with that. But I also think. We cannot allow road races in the town that close entire sections of the town. I have no problem with restricted access. I have, that's fine with me. But this closure, and there's posted notices all over our end of town that said road closed from this to this, road closed from this to this. If you go around and look at all those signs, they overlap each other, which basically says you're stuck. Have a good day. And they've done it every Sunday and the first Sunday of October for years. And I've got to tell you, it's very annoying when a police officer tells you you can't go to church because a road race is on its way here. It's not here yet. It's on its way. But you can't get off North Shore. I don't support this article as it's written, but I support the concept. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Amber. Mr. Newton. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, one thing I might want to point out is uh, needs a little correction there. It says 25 registered votes. Might want to be voters. Right. Yeah. Um, I stand in opposition of this article, uh, mostly because my wife is a runner, and if I didn't, she'd kick my butt. Um, I think that it's a well-intentioned article, but as Mr. Waddell said, the uh, system seems to work as it is. We did have uh, some opposition to different road race races, and it was taken into consideration and adjusted very, very fairly, I believe. So I am a, in opposition of this article. Thank you, Mr. Newton. Yes, ma'am. Would it pin your 15 title F? I would like to elaborate on that particular article, what happened last year. All the other years before, 45 minutes, an hour, and they were gone. This year, they shut down the bridge. They put metal gates all the way through Ocean Boulevard and Ashworth Ave. And the way they had the opening, it was, you kind of had to zigzag back and forth. If you were, can't see in the dark, because they started at five o'clock in the morning, or you're an elderly person and you get, and you get confused, you wouldn't know where you're gonna go. All the other years before, they sent out postcards. You knew exactly what to expect, but last event was different. They shut the bridge down a little after six o'clock in the morning, and they didn't reopen it till almost noontime. And the concept, the way it's written is a little different, not what I would like, but you can't shut down the roads. What if your mother-in-law has a heart attack and you want to go to the, the, the ER, to the hospital? I mean, they got to do it a little different. They shut everything down. That's all I have to say about it. Thank you, Ms. Pinion. Yes, Chief. Sir. Jim Samia, Fire Chief. 
and as a point of order, sir, I'm not a resident, so I won't be speaking in opposition or support. However, I would like to say that in my tenure as fire chief, what I have seen uh, in the recent years is the level of planning that's gone into any of the road closures has been in, uh, including police and fire significantly more, and I think that the level of professionalism has certainly been brought to bear, and I feel that uh, they have been doing a tremendous job, whether it's the, the vetted process that we have for town um, road closures or for outside um, entities to come in, they've certainly been doing a much better job, and we certainly do appreciate all of their help. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chief Mr. Tilton. Peter Tilton, 125 Landing Road. My first uh, thought was I wanted to make sure that this is legally binding on the selectmen if it should pass. Is it a legally binding article? I was wondering about that. I think this article is uh, not legal under RSA 41 colon 11 that is left to the selectmen re may regulate the use of all public highways, sidewalks, and commons in their towns. Uh, New Hampshire is a state where we have only that authority that state law gives us. Uh, that it is not left to the uh, townspeople in this forum to regulate the use of public highways. It's left to the selectmen. I wondered about that. I do, I do support the concept of it, though. Um, unless it's a, uh, an emergency, I don't think that there's any reason that you should be telling people that they can't leave or go to their homes. Um, we live in a town. It isn't Disney World, the whole thing. This is a residential community, too. And selectmen are getting a better handle on how they handle it, but there's no reason to be shutting down people's access and egress from their homes that they're paying taxes on. This isn't, a, it's not admission, you're paying property taxes to live there. So I really hope you guys really mind it because of the, the earlier person that said, well, perhaps it was you, somebody said, if they don't like it, vote them out. Because I haven't been affected, but I would be really, really irate if I was told by a police officer, no, two hours, you can go to your house, but go someplace else now. Thank you, Mr. Tilton. Mr. Rainier. Richard Rainier, 29 Highland Ave. If you read the last sentence of this article, the only allowed exceptions are the annual seafood festival, neighborhood block parties, and parades, which means we allow, he wants to allow just three exemptions, the seafood festival, comma, neighborhood block parties, comma, and neighborhood parades. If you read it just the way it's written, so in in reality, this would exempt the Christmas parade. The Christmas parade is not a neighborhood parade; it's a town parade. So this exemption refers to neighborhood block parties and neighborhood parades. So I'm opposed to this. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Preston. I'd just, like to, I'd just like to say I learned something here a couple minutes ago. I didn't realize that bridge was shut down for six hours. That's a little much. Um, I'll be honest. I signed this petition. I signed it for one reason. Steve Joyce. Steve's had property, his, fam his family house since 1969. I probably would vote against this act and probably will, whether it's you know, binding or non-binding. But there was <clears throat> down at Goran's luncheonette that shy German girl that spoke a couple people before me. <laughs> <clears throat> One of her customers, you know, was trying to get us going, and he, and he said, uh, "Steve, ask Charlie. He he probably wouldn't sign it." He goes, "No, I'd sign it. I signed it because of Steve Joyce. Whether I believed it or not, I believe in things going forward like that. That about it's a non-binding, so the selectmen still have the thing. You know, Steve's a good guy. We've known each other since we were teenagers. Steve did time. Well, I mean, served Jay." on the Conservation Commission, you know? He's a good guy. He's very well-intentioned. I think the Board of Selectmen has a very tough job. I think the first time this happened, you know, everybody got so many complaints about this race that it was media was canceled. That always, then the people, I believe, and please correct me if I'm wrong, um, but it, it became the race. People said, then we'll just pull out. And then the business people said, no, you don't want to do that, which I understand. They, they bring a lot of people. They fill a lot of motel rooms. So they, business came in and lobbied the selectmen and it was brought back and that. I think what happened is we missed some communication. I think Tracy hit the nail on the head, Mr. Emmerich. And I think we just need a little bit more communication with, with the people at the beach because I was shocked to just find out now that it was six hours. 
personally, I did get the notice. They sent anything, roads closed. It's sitting on my dash now. I went down to the Cape for the weekend now, you know. So Steve's got good intentions. We can tweak this. You know, maybe the selectmen can ask the village district to work with the residents down here and see if we can tweak this a little bit and, you know, to get less complaints for everybody. But thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Joyce? No. All right. Okay. Um, Mr. Bridal and Ms. Woolsey. Can I just get a friendly amendment to change the votes to voters? I think we can do that just by, uh, just by doing it. We, that's clearly the intention was to describe 25 registered voters. Okay. Change it to what? Voters. What are we doing? Change the votes to there voters. Was a typograph 25 vote. registered voters. Better voters. Good. Ms. Woolsey? I'll second that if you're... No, no, we don't need an amendment. No. Okay. Correct. All right. I had a huge number of calls and complaints with that situation at the beach that Uta explained. And uh, I certainly appreciate where Mr. Joyce is coming from on this. We understand as selectmen that we can't interfere with the state roads. But this isn't a matter of being mean and not extending the beach season and whatever. We have in October and March every year um, private companies who make money from all this. Yes, the people do come. Yes, they stay in hotels. Yes, they spend money locally. But they are tying up roads. And I will say that as a taxpayer, myself and every one of my constituents has a right to the use of the public roadways. And we need to tailor a little bit a little bit differently. So this company donates to charity. That's very nice. I like to see everybody donate to charity. But you are inconveniencing and annoying a huge number of residents, including, as Mr. Emmerich said, the residents on the same routes over and over and over again, blocking people from accessing their property. And that is, that is intolerable. I will be looking forward to the public vote on this article. At least this will give us a flavor of where the public's coming from. And I'm hoping for good feedback so that as a board, we can go ahead and start making perhaps a few adjustments in what we're doing uh, authorizing these road races. All right, thank you, Ms. Wolsey. We've had a um, healthy discussion on Article uh, 42. And, and seeing uh, that we've come to a conclusion on that, we're going to move on to Article 43. And Article 42 will appear on the ballot as it was corrected uh, with that typo.